Alright, hello again. In this tutorial I'd like to talk about uh, some simple techniques for animation and uh, perhaps the goal is to create something like this. And this might be a little bit too slow. This, this is actually slowed down quite a bit. What I want to do is really show some techniques to uh, explore when you start with an idea. Uh, maybe with a face that has just one eye or two eyes or three eyes and you want to move them each uh, in their own way. Um, you might uh, want to change the, the smiley face there, the, the mouth might need to change as well. Uh, and you don't have all day to to do hundreds of frames like that, right? When you do traditional animation, uh, you quite often have to draw every single frame or maybe every other and then find some way to interpolate in between. And that's what I want to talk about. It's really sort of a couple of shortcuts to make it a little bit faster. Uh, this one here, for instance, um, uh, is a little bit smaller. Uh, still has uh, some parts that are kind of... Uh, Iffy, but uh, the technique is what we want to focus on. So let's uh, let's have a look at uh, how we started that. There's one here in between that already is showing some promising smoothing in the animation. Um, so let's uh, let's explore some of those. Um, this one here is a starting point. In fact, we'll we'll go to that from a blank. All right. So you start with nothing. Um, <clears throat> you have a uh, maybe 1280 by 768. I would always recommend making it a little bit bigger than what you really need at the end um, so that you, you have some margin, you can resample it down and get rid of noise, um, all sorts of benefits with that. You can crop to it. All right, so we have this one image, no animation yet, and uh, you want to draw a face. Um, let's say we'll go to the brush tool. I'll take the regular airbrush here, large airbrush, uh, and I'll just draw some sort of a circle oid. Um, maybe a little bit bigger. Let's make it even closer to the edge here. There, flat face. Okay, and <clears throat> so that will be the face for each of the frames, but we can even have perhaps a mouth. That's a commonality. Um, and uh, you know why not? Let's, let's also make it one eye. So we have one big eye here, and we have something like this in the middle. All right, so first thing we'll do is we'll create an animation. Go to the animation menu, click create, and say we have the patients for just five or six frames. So we draw five or six frames, and since that is a milestone accomplished, okay, nothing is moving, but we have at least those six frames. We can go to uh, store animation from the animation menu, uh, and you can uh, put that into memory, or if you have a fast drive, disk drive like an SSD, or if it's only a few frames like this, that will be fast enough. You can store it to disk. The benefit there is that if for any reason the program dies, crashes, power out, whatever it is, uh, the file is on a, you know, this animation is on a file and you can recover it too. You can find it somewhere in the temp folders. I see the next need here is now to focus on how to animate the eye. A couple of different parts of it here. Um, so one, one way to animate the eye is to pick it up as a custom brush and, and then stamp it down in this place at a different location. So for instance, one thing we'll do is we'll grab the uh, portion of the eye we want, let's say the lasso to alpha, and just circle maybe the inner part. Maybe that's the only part we want to move at first. All right, so let's do that again a little bit better. It could be a circular selection, a rectangle, or a lasso for something a bit more sophisticated. And what I'll do here now is I'll just pick this up as a custom brush. And now I have it in my brush. You can see it. It's not fully opaque. Make sure you put this up to full opacity. So now you see it's hiding. The, uh, the white part is uh, hiding, uh, is showing opaque. The black part is showing opaque. And that allows us to actually show the eye in a slightly different location as we go and zap through the different frames. So the first frame I'm going to leave the same. The last one also, because I want to create some sort of a looping animation, so the last and the first should be the same. And then I go to this frame and simply um, <clears throat> go a little bit down, or maybe a little bit down and to the right. Now the first click might not take it, uh, because I had to focus on this part. There's a keyboard focus or mouse focus issue. So I may, I may need to do two clicks to get it. Don't move the mouse in between. And then go here, bring it down a little bit, two clicks, <clears throat> and then go here and go there. And one more, 
And you know, you always want to be careful that you don't go out too far because it might cut into the the ring of the eye here, right? But um, we have here now a little animation where the inner part of the eye is moving. All right, so that's already a first step. With that, we can do a lot, right? Whenever you can pick up a portion as your custom brush, um, you can use that to stamp it down somewhere else. Um, <clears throat> that could be done with the eye as well, uh, with the mouth. So uh, we could go with a rectangular selection in this case here, easy peasy, and then simply pick that up as a custom brush. The yeah, brush you selected as brush, and now we have that, and we can bring it up a little bit higher. All right, well, two clicks. Okay, so <clears throat> that's, let me undo that. Let's go back to the original. What's the other techniques? Um, well, one of them is to, to draw that selection and then use the free transform. Free transform, right? And I'm going to use that for not the inner part of the eye, but the entire eye now. All right, so I'm going to go to the same selection tool here, the lasso, and give it enough margin so I have some leeway to go around it. All right, perhaps I need to add a little bit here. Let's see how we can do that. If I use the control and the shift key, I can use the left button to pan around, the right button to zoom in. And I want to add to this selection. Simply use the shift key to add to that selection. Or the right, with the right, left button, right? Shift key to add or remove. And remove would be with the right button. Right button, shift key down. All right, and so we have now a selection that I'm going to use with the free transform tool. So here it is. Image, free transform. Now we have that here, but we also have it in the selection. The difference is that under the selection, all it does is, <clears throat> let's see, we have the transform there, free transform selection. All that does is it transforms the selection. Right? You can move this around, you can skew it up or down, you can scale it bigger, smaller, uh, but it doesn't affect the picture underneath it. Right? So um, what we'll do is, and, and by the way, the fact that you see this pink is because I have um, this thing here enabled, overlay mode. If you disable that, all you have is the marching ants, which sometimes it's uh, too slow or too distracting. Sometimes you really like that pink appearance here. Um, so I'm going to use not this one. Let's right click here and say apply transform, or we can undo that um, and, and do instead the free transform on the image. Right, so it uses that current selection, but now it's actually transforming it, and but it still leaves the original there. You see, it grabs a copy and puts that into the transformable widget here. So as long as you have a large uh, margin around it here, you can actually make some small moves without revealing the old one, the old image here underneath it. Right, so the idea is that you can use that within certain limits. And uh, sometimes you need to move it a lot to the left, so you need to have more margin to the right side to still cover it up. Uh, in fact, let's let's go do that. Uh, let's right click here outside and say cancel. <clears throat> let's let's say we want to have a big movement to the left, and then um, we need more margin, more space on the right side. So I'm going to keep using that lasso tool, and with the shift key down, I'm going to add a little bit more here on the right side. And here on the left side, in fact, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to remove, I'm going to cut away this part so that the eye can actually go closer to the edge here without hitting the head, the rim of the head. All right, let's do even a little bit more here with the shift key. Remove some of that as well. There you go. And some of this. Okay, so we have basically a lot of trailing space behind it that allows us to move this thing this thing to the left with the free transform. See how I can move it and I still don't see the other eye below it. All right. Okay, so uh, if I don't remember where it was initially, I just cancel and do that again. So image, free transform. And now I need to be on the first frame, the, first, uh, the second frame. First one is here, second one is here. That's the one I want to grab. And I'm going to move it quite a big distance. I'm also going to rotate it. Why not? We have a free transform. We can make it a little bit a little bit smaller. We can squish it. All sorts of different things we can do. And then right click to, or left click actually, outside of the box here to uh, apply the transform. All right, then go to the next one. And 
do that transform as well. <clears throat> uh, let's do the free transform again. And then this time we'll uh, skew it up a little bit. Uh, ah, we're getting, we having this thing here peek around a little bit. Oops, we applied that. That was not good enough. Let's undo that. Let's go do the image free transform again. Um, you know, there's all sorts of different things you can do with that free transform. You can also flip it upside down. If you look at right click here, you can flip vertical. Uh, other things you can do, flip horizontal. You can uh, reset some of these individually, like just to scale the rotation uh, or the shear. And you can also say whether you want to scale from the center or from the other side. Right? If you scale from the center, which is the default, uh, it scales everything the same way. But if you scale it not from the center, then depending on where you grab it, the other side is the reference for the scale. So if I if I want to scale relative to this center here, this edge, I grab it in the edge middle and it scales that part, but not this part. And if I want to scale it down here, it scales relative to the top. If I take a diagonal item like a corner, it scales relative to that center. All right? Okay, so there's a lot of different uh, fine options to explore here. Let's apply this transform. Let's see a few more. Um, this one will make it a little bit bigger. So again, image, free transform, even bigger than that. Make sure it doesn't hit the mouth. And apply that. And I think that's a wrap. Okay, so we have a nice amount of animation on this eye. And we could do something with the mouth as well. There's actually one or two images where it's already happening. Uh, but we could do perhaps a little bit more movement with the mouth. Let's go do that. Let's grab the <laughs> mouth region. And uh, image, free transform. Um, so for this one, we'll move a little bit. Let's move them up and squish them a little bit. Eventually, we want them to become it to become a, a sad face. So let's go down like that. Uh, let's go here and image free transform. Now this one is where we'll go flip vertical. So we have that sad face. And maybe we need to bigger, make it a little bit scale up first and then flip. There you go. You can still move it, position it, make sure it hides the old mouth altogether. Maybe put it a little bit to the side. Maybe rotate it a little bit. All right, and apply that. All right, so I think we have enough to see what the options are here. And the next thing we'll want to do, uh, first of all, let's clear this selection and store or save this animation. It's a milestone that's very important. Let's make sure we have a way to start from here again if anything happens to it, or if we even change our mind as to how many frames we want in it. Right, it's a very short animation. It goes very quick. Uh, the head itself could also be transformed. Right, We could do the whole selection around the head and apply the free transform to that. There's actually a lot more to it. Uh, with the mouth plugin, we have a wiggle tool that makes the whole thing come to life. So there's a couple of other options there. We have some videos on that as well in the tutorials on the YouTube channel. Um, but here, what I'd like to do now is see how to make this slower. Right. <clears throat> we, we had just enough time to go do these five or six frames. Now I'd like to actually turn this into an animation that will take one or two seconds at 30 frames per second. So I need about 60 frames, right? something in that range. So there's a couple of techniques to slow it down. One of them is you go to right-click on this uh, timeline here, right-click and under the frame editing options, you'll see, which by the way, you see also here under animation under frames, right? That's the same menu. All right, so right-click on, on, on this uh, timeline and you'll see a uh, time stretch. So with that, you can stretch time and say, for instance, you need it twice as long and now you have 12 frames or even more, 24. Uh, you can do that without frame blending, and that will basically it will just hold each frame. It will take longer, but it won't do any sort of transition in between. Right? So that may not be what we want. We want to perhaps see a little bit of a flow. And to do that, you need the frame blending. But one of the problems with that is that it now shows multiple images as it transitions from one. It's a blending. Right? It's not figuring out how it moves from here to there. Um, that's done with the motion interpolation. 
uh, or motion estimation and we'll take a look at that too but this one here could be a starting point that we can also use if we do one more thing and that is to blur it and then to threshold it or to change contrast so the first technique is to blur it first part of the trick here is to blur it so we'll go to the Gaussian blur perhaps there you go <laughs> and give it a lot of blur and don't worry about it becoming light gray we will change the contrast again afterwards and animate that so we now have the whole thing kind of blurry but if we change the contrast for instance just going here to expanding the dynamic range that might already give an idea of what's going to happen even better if you go to the filter and adjust a couple of ways you can adjust the con uh, threshold or adjust the contrast in the filter or work with the curves let's look, look at all of them right first of all the uh, the the threshold so with the threshold you say it's either black or white right and we know here it's not black or white it's some sort of gray and there's many different gray levels so what you do is you say where it's going to threshold where it's going to switch from one to the other it's going to be either totally black or totally white there's no compromise and um, what you can see here because because we blurred it it may allow us to actually get an interesting new animation that has now additional frames we did not create initially but the blurring kind of nicely created them for us and now with the threshold we have something uh, that looks a bit crisp like the original now, it's actually more crisp because the original if we go back to this uh, the original had a bit of softening on the edge it was the airbrush i used so you see a little bit of softening here some some blurry uh, s smooth transition here and that's because well it's a so it's an airbrush right it's not a a, a very clean cut uh, transition from white to black um so <clears throat> what we'll do here oh i i went back to the which one is that maybe i should go to the other one Nope, that one has also only five. Okay, I guess I didn't save the uh, the longer one. Let's redo that. Let's right click. Let's go time stretch. And this time I'm going to go just two of them. Let's do uh, double up to 12. Um, there you go. With frame blending. There you go. All right, so again, we see that there are multiple frames showing. Those are the tween frames um, from the blended composition. And what I'd like to do really is to uh, blur that away. Uh, let's go blur, Gaussian blur, same amount, something like this, even a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. All right. And let's go store that. All right, let's not forget that. Let's store to memory. And now this one, um, instead of using the threshold, this time we'll use another technique, adjust value. And there we can change, let's reset. Uh, you can change the contrast, right? And you can make it a little bit more the way it used to look. Right? So there's there's ways to to get to that, but it's it's trimming down from the uh, the the ones that were kind of blurry here. See here we see perhaps a part of this eye and then part of this eye. So let's see how we can cut that down to just one eye using that value filter. Right? It's going to be it's going to be tough, but you might quite often find a way to trim it so it has that very crisp look, but only one eye showing. Or, well, you know what? Sometimes that's actually cool, and this little monster deserves to have one and a half eyes. <laughs> so whatever uh, fits in your particular project's needs here, uh, you can see here, we have uh, quite, num quite a number of extra frames. All right, that's one way. And then there is one more way that I like to show, and that's to use the um, adjust curve with the curve tool. Um, sometimes you get some nice, uh, some neat effects here. Let's go reset it. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit darker, right, bring it down, and then a little bit brighter in this area. And so you see how that kind of narrows it down. But there still is a nice little... A haze of darkness of shade around a little bit of a shadow uh, almost animate that across each frame perhaps at that point expand dynamic range uh, so it's going from white out here to black out here somewhere perhaps at this point even um, adjust the value some more right let's see maybe we do need a little bit more 
crispness to that, a little bit more contrast, and animate that. Right, so and, and you might even at that point say, yeah, that's good, but let's turn it really either white or black. No gray. There's still some gray values here. Let's perhaps once again go to uh, the threshold. Right. So these are all very good tools to use, and sometimes you use them because it allows you to thin the lines a little bit. Right. If there is some blurriness on those edges, and you um, go all the way to the right, you might see them turn fatter and thinner lines. If you go to the left. So that could be also a reason to use that. And if after that you are happy with what it looks like, but you don't want it to be crisp like that, there might be a little bit of jaggies, there might be a little bit of coarseness to it as you zoom in, well, you could still reintroduce the blurring to that as well. Or wait until you zoom, right? Uh, for instance, if you zoom, if you scale, that is, if you resample this uh, down to a smaller size, because maybe that's really not the size you need at the very end for your project, uh, maybe what you need is half that size. Oops, I forgot to change that. So let's go to resample and say we want it half the size or, or even smaller. Let's go, well, no, let's go 640 by, there you go. All right, so we have each frame being resampled. And then at that point, we this might be what we need for our project. Or we want some more transition. Right? And so one thing I want to do is also explore uh, another technique to do um, frame animation. And that's in between with the motion prediction module. Now, I'm going to do that on a subset of this. Um, you, know, you know what? Actually, let's keep the whole thing, but just make it a little bit smaller uh, for the sake of speed and also for what it can do. So let's say we want 512 by whatever th that turns out to be, 307. <clears throat> Actually, it's always good to keep it an even number. Let's make it 320 there, yeah. even if it distorts the aspect ratio a little bit. <clears throat> um, we now have this animation. I'm going to minimize all the others. And uh, let's take a look at how to use the motion prediction module to produce those tween frames. When it moves too fast, it may not give you proper results. But when it's uh, small enough, maybe some of it will be OK. So let's see what we get out of this one. Um, first of all, we'll go and produce the, the old traditional way, the frame blending, right? Time stretch. Uh, we'll say, let's go to nine. Let's go in increments. Let's go gradually here. So nine with frame blending. Let's do it again. Um, time stretch. Let's go not quite double up, but maybe 15. OK, let's go one more time. Um, can we do here time stretch? Let's do about 30 now. Okay. All right. So here we have a real mess, right? And so again, what it is that we can do about that was to um, smooth it. And uh, that would be under the blur. Let's say Gaussian blur. There's a bunch of other blurs you could use here. Uh, Gaussian usually works just fine. Let's use this like that, animate it. And then once we have that, what we needed was to adjust the contrast. <clears throat> Maybe first with the expanding the dynamic range, then with, uh, let's see here, particularly with the uh, Cyclops turning into two eyes here, what we'll do is go to adjust um, value and see if we can adjust the contrast all of these to get it down to something like that, animate it. All right, all right. So we have a starting animation that's not too dramatic from one step to the other. And I'm going to store that. And now I'm going to explore the motion prediction module under the animated filters, motion prediction module. And what we do with that is we we have a, a grid spacing here. Let's make sure we do a dry run. Leave it in dry run first. And grid spacing allows us to slice this image into small grids, uh, small tiles. Each, each square will be tracked with a motion tracker. The default is 12 by 12 pixels. And uh, we can still zoom in here uh, to get a good look at that. And so it's going to track each of those with a motion tracker. 
Uh, we can see then how far does it move, we can set how far to look for it, and there is a fudge factor that could be very important for the quality as well. Let's make sure it's in dry run and give it a try. Uh, we're going to do three tweens, so out of uh, 30 frames total, it's going to turn into 90 frames. Something like that, 85. Alright, so that's actually fairly decent. Right, but there are a, gl a few glitches occasionally. Let's make it a little bit smaller so you can see better. Let's make it slower, that is. Seven tweens, and that's uh, 200. That's not even enough. Let's give it 10 or 12. Yeah, we can do 337 frames easily. So you see that some of these transitions are a bit beyond the ability of the motion prediction module. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's just because we're trying too hard or looking too far. Maybe it's not moving that fast. Or that far. Let's try again with a different value. Uh, another thing you can do is reduce the fudge factor here to zero or one, just to make it clear that it needs to try harder and look more for where the candidates uh, are moving. By the way, you can visualize that. You can visualize an arrow or a, I mean, showing a motion vector indicating which way things are moving. All right. Let's take a look at that. And you can see where these red lines are showing uh, how much motion it actually detects. And of course, if you reduce the grid spacing to a smaller, higher density grid, then it's going to see more of those. <clears throat> but uh, essentially, that's just a visualization of what the motion prediction module is trying to determine, is where do these blocks go, all these little squares, as they are moving and changing shapes, um, it's trying really hard to figure out if it can still use the existing one then morph to that. Um, so let's see what we get with this one. You know what, I'm going to use that. That looks fairly decent. I'm going to use that. So uncheck the dry run and if you want give it an extra refinement the refinement pass. That will take extra time but it will pr probably produce an even better result. And now you can see there are still some cases where it's doing a wavy string, a strange uh, tra transition. And that's really some of the uh, parts where it's just too, too much change for the motion prediction module to figure it out. Uh, it's doing great when you have uh, fairly small movements that can be interpolated and detected easily. But um, even so, we have, I think, enough here. We have 336 frames. First of all, that may be more than what we need. So one thing we could do is right-click here and uh, go back to the time stretch, but this time in the opposite direction, let's say half of that, or maybe not 168, maybe even less than that, maybe 150 or something like that. Okay, and now... Um, we we still have a few places like this one here where there is a little bit of oddity showing, right? See this part as you scrub through that, but that's also something you can quite easily fix. Now, sometimes you fix it by painting it away or painting into it. Right? You grab the the airbrush tool in this case, uh, large airbrush, and you paint over that. Uh, so that might be enough of a fix. That's actually too large. We would need to make the size a little bit smaller. Let's undo it and paint again. Anyway, so you, you can fix that. Many times um, you have some little details that are just not worth bothering. You right, use the right button to erase it, you use the left button to paint new stuff on it. Uh, if it's just a few frames where some glitches are showing, that's what I would do. Right? And afterwards, if you scale this whole thing down, you won't even notice it anymore. One more thing you can do, though, also, is to blur it away. Again, if you have some of these and too many of them, one thing you can do is you can blur it, once again, with the uh, blur, let's say Gaussian blur, always a good friend to try here, and blur it like this, animate it, and then back to the um, adjustment, threshold, or again the curves tool. Any of these will do some interesting things to it to uh, perhaps reduce the line size, something like this. All right, and when you think about it, now we have, after we started with just four or five, maybe six frames, we now have an animation that lasts five seconds at 30 frames per second. 
All right, that was a little bit extreme on the eye, but hey, sometimes that's what we need when we have a little alien dude looking at us. <laughs> and the other thing too is that we may want to actually have additional uh, wiggle motion, right? And so that's another thing we have there too. Uh, let me do this uh, the following way. Let me trim this to, um, let's see, time stretch. Let's reduce it by two. And uh, this time without frame blending. So we just toss every other frame and we have just 75 frames left. And it's a little bit faster now. All right, so what I want to do now is to um, to add a little bit of uh, a wiggle warp to that. Maybe I need a bit more space around it, a little bit more margin, so I could scale this whole thing down, uh, or I could add frames, uh, space around it, right? You can go to change the image size, and that way you'll essentially add more space around it. The color will be white, and instead of a size of 512 by 320, you might want to add, uh, the width is okay, but maybe the height needs more. In fact, let's go to 512 by 512, All right, something like that. Or if you want to increase them both, let's do 600 by 600 there. So that way we have a nice amount of margin all around it. Okay, and sometimes that's not um, the way you want to do that. Another technique, let's, let's go and crop it back to a smaller size and show another technique. Um, so I'm gonna go to the crop tool from the image menu and say let's say we went back to something like this because we didn't store this so we don't have an easy way to just restore it uh shame on me um, but what i what i could also do here let's say if this was s the size that i i actually had it uh crop it and after you crop by the way you always even though it shows you the dimensions it might be off by one pixel not sure if that's a a bug, yeah, we have one of them showing as an odd value here. That will be difficult to save for AVI or some other compressors. So what I always recommend is resampling that as well. Uh, let's go to 460 by 408. That's fine. Let's leave it like that. And so this one I'm going to store animation and store animation to disk. I can minimize this one. And so we're working with this one, and what we want to do is make a little bit more space, a, a bit more margin space around the head. And in this case, what we'll do is simply use the filter to scale it, scale it down in this case. We don't scale the image space, we scale the image inside it. All right, so transform, and the, the, the transform tool will do that. Um, you can go and simply scale it down. All right, now you can also scale it down uh, now, this will leave the black area around it, but we can later then fill that back with white quite easily. Uh, or you can tile it as long as you don't scale it down too much. Right? Now, sometimes that's actually exactly what you want. You want a whole bunch of these dudes here, five by five, why not? So tiling it is actually an option that you might want to use as well. But if you don't, uh, one thing you can do is you can scale it down a little bit with the tiling enabled and enough that you don't see the next row of heads, right? something like that, and that may just allow you to add a little bit of extra space to the left and right and above and below. Animate that. And so now we should have a little bit more space. All right, if you compare to this one, this one was a little bit tighter, closer to the edge. Not, not huge, not big. And uh, so now what I'd like to do, though, is explore that extra uh, wiggle uh, option. There is, there's a couple of, there's a couple of uh, animation tools. Um, one of them is, uh, let me see, where is it? I'm trying to remember uh, the mouth plugin. It's uh, probably, hold on, let me look for that for a second. Oh, yeah, it's probably under the old plugins miscellaneous yep there it is mouth All right so the mouth is essentially that's the um, exposure sheet and you might find it under that name also in other places you know probably maybe under animation um, there exposure sheet All right All right so it's also known as the mouth plugin because it essentially allows you to work on uh, phonemes or, or what, what do these look like uh, but one of the cool things it has also is that it lets you um, not only choose different mouth sets but 
it has um, timing. No, nope. it has the file um, exposure sheet. Where is it? There is another option I'm looking for here. Camera. Ah, oh, yeah. Sequence frame with the frame painter. Right. So when you use that, you can say how many frames you want for the whole thing. The new animation, the original had 75, and you may not want to even change that. You may want to keep it exactly the same. Let's do that. Let's keep it exactly the same. But the thing that it also does is add a sort of a, a, a random wiggle warpy noise. Um, let's take a look at it. Okay, so first of all, you have up here the sequence of all of your frames. Right? All of your frames are here. And what you could do is simply transfer them here. Right. But then so so that's that's a little bit beyond really what we needed that uh tool for. Actually let's 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 start with a much shorter animation. That's really what we, we should do here. So let's go back to uh one of the earlier ones. I don't know if it's this one. Yeah, that one had only four or so. So I'm gonna go with this one. Just five six frames. And what we want to do is add a transition from one to the other, but keeping it alive. And so that's exactly what the mouth plugin will allow you to do. So let's go to, um, let's, this time let's look for it by the original name here, the uh, animation exposure sheet. There you go. And with the exposure sheet, actually, no, before we do that, let's just scale it down a little bit. We don't need this super size. Let's go a little bit smaller. Let's make it uh, 640. Oh, let's keep it constrained. Hold on, let me do that again. Image, resample, constrain it. There, half size. There. Okay. All right, so we have just six frames. And I'm going to, uh, of course, do the habit, uh, the good habit here, which is to store. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is to use the exposure sheet, but only for one reason, and that's to go straight into the frame painter. Right? So I'm not going to actually add any faces or any, any mouth based on phonemes. That's what the exposure sheet is usually for. What I'm going to do instead is to go straight to the frame painter and produce a new output on that. And say we have initially six frames, and I want to turn that into, let's say, 60. So we have a two second at 30 frames per second. And that's exactly what this part is for. <clears throat> so what I'll do is uh, pick, pick one of these frames and say I want to paint it across a couple of these. Right, so perhaps about 10 of them. Then I'm going to scroll over, take the next frame, and paint them in here. Then scroll over, take this frame, paint it in here. So I'm filling it in into a new sequence. I can even go back to have this one here again and then pick this guy up here. So you can you can composite with just a few frames that don't necessarily have to be in the right sequence. Not yet. You can basically pick a few frames you want to grab and then place them in the right location and perhaps one more time have this guy and then this guy at the very end. All right, so we have a sequence of frames here, and they are perfect, and we don't want them to be perfect. All right, so the purpose here is to add a little bit of what we call wiggle hold. All right, so add this, and amount of wiggle, you'll want to experiment with that. I'll just keep it default here, but there are the size of the wiggle, there's the amount of the wiggle, and shoot it. And so what it's going to do now is it's going to generate this new sequence, which you could do without the wiggle, but with the wiggle it will keep it alive a little bit as well. Let's shoot that. And so that's another one that you'll probably want to to really take a close look at if you're doing a lot of these kinds of animations. Because now not only has it you know, held it, it's, it's, it's expanded it in the duration, but it's also added a bit of this, this wiggle. And this wiggle motion, you can now also do the whole thing again that we did before, which is to smooth it, to you know, like gauche and blur it, do some transition, and then threshold it again. Um, so let's let's do exactly that. Let's first let's first go and blur it. Um, 
Gaussian blur. Right, no need to reinvent the wheel. We've done this, tested it. It works well. And and then perhaps even just use the regular uh, time stretch to make it even slower. Let's say 150 seconds again, if we want five seconds with frame blending this time. And perhaps even some more blurring. Tiny little bit of Gaussian blur. Once more. So we really won't see any of those uh, nasty duplications of the frames as it goes from one frame to the other. It's just too blurry and too wiggly anyway. And um, at this point we could go expand dynamic range, change the contrast, uh, let's go to adjust uh, threshold or value, um, let's reset it to default and now add some contrast and perhaps make it brighter so it gets thinner, maybe a little bit darker. So it gets to be white lines, wide lines, and there you go. So now you have an animation that's a little bit more decent because it, it lasts five seconds and at 30 frames per second. And uh, it, it, it's alive. It has a nice amount of, of movement there. And uh, it didn't really take a whole lot to get to that. All right, I hope this uh, is inspiring and useful. There's uh, a lot of things you can do with those few tools that we've used, and uh, we uh, will probably think about a few other tools that could be really useful in this context and uh, perhaps follow up with some more. So uh, until then, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, happy waffling and howling. <laughs>